So in gravity sketch, there's all kinds of different ways to affect your surface geometry. So one that I don't use out in other programs a lot is crease. So what I'm gonna do is just construct a jaw for this robot guy and show you how I would use crease. It's much more uh, well known in automotive and in shoe design and things like that. Um, so I'll just construct it and just show you how I would do it. Okay, so this is a little robot. It's got a bigger head normally, and if you do want to use this robot, it is in the community folders, so it's available for you now if you're in Gravity Sketch. So I've changed the head a little bit, and I just want to put a jaw on it. We're in an early stage of designing this guy here. So let's just do a subdivision modeling jaw. So how do we do that? So first of all, let's make a new layer. So come here. So blue button on your non-dominant hand layer and we want to lock our other layers so we can't affect anything and we just want to go, you've got new layer group or new layer or we just want new layer. So we're now working on that new layer. These other layers now you can make them transparent if needed and uh, I'll get rid of them completely if you, you know, if you want to hide them. So we don't need to do that for this particular um, uh, exercise. So we're going to start with uh, over here, we're just going to use the plane. So I've come down, I've looked at all the different tools. So I've got um, ink, stroke, point, and then all of the different surfaces, and then these, which are the primitives. Um, and in the primitives, I'm just going to pick plane. Now we want it to be a subdivision object. So we've got plane, subdivision, all selected, and then we'll just draw it out. And it'll be, it'll be wrong, it'll be too big, but it doesn't matter because basically we just want to use these two pieces. So using my inner grips, I'm just gonna move it around. So you should be well familiar with this if you're watching this video. Um, and I just wanna place this polygonal plane roughly where I want this, this jaw that I'm gonna to build to be. So we'll start it there and then we'll have a look at it uh, in terms of its geometry. So I'll hit the blue button on my non-dominant hand and you can see now it's a plane four points and lots of edges. So we can just start manipulating it from this point. So we'll do like an Iron Giant style jaw. Um, funnily enough, it's like bright purple at the moment. So um, it, 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 you can change the color and the style at any, any time you want. Um, you can just pick it up and on your dominant hand, hit the palette and then you can change it to anything that you want. So if we just change it to a bluey green color, really uh, it doesn't worry me at this stage. So pick it up, blue button, and we're now in point mode. To change your mode, you just flick your thumb on your dominant hand left and right, and it goes edge, point, face, object. So it's very normal uh, if you're used to other 3D programs. So we'll pull, first of all, this point to the edge. So that means we've now got it snapped on the mirrored. You can see there, it's on the center of the blue line, so it's the, the blue axis. Um, so it's a cross X is, is the way we describe it, which means it's mirrored. Um, and I'm gonna just start constructing this jaw. So I'm moving the edges here. So I'll move this edge to right out to the side, and then I'll use the fire, this, this button on my dominant hand, and that is gonna stamp down a new edge or, or extrude an edge is, is the correct way to say that. Um, and then I'll do that again. I'll come around here to the corner, just moving the points as I go, and then go up here to where it would come into the corner. Um, and then do another one here. In fact, I'll go round, I'll do like a rounded bit here. I really wanna keep this quite simple, don't wanna make it too complex at all. Okay, so that would go round there, and we've got this nice turn on the jaw here. So that's the first part done, all done and dusted. So if I wanted to move edges, just flick with my thumb left and right, and then till I come to the edge mode, and then I could just move edges, flick again, that would be um, for scaling, flick again, nothing, flick again, um, edges, and then back to points. So, so what we might want to do is make it a, give it a little bit of depth. So we're going to definitely have this big jaw here coming out the front. Let's just move it around a little bit, like so. Uh, there we go. It's about the right sort of positioning now, maybe something like that. And then you can say, take these edges here and extrude them in. It's snapped in the center, so that would work fine. Let's come around the corner here. I could take, say, uh, this edge here 
and this edge here. And if you just push the points to the other points, they snap and that gives you a nice fully sealed up uh, piece of geometry there. And you can see me tweaking the little points as I go, just moving them and snapping them together. So that's that return there. And then what I could do is I could just go around here like this and then just snap them together. And I'm just joining everything up and getting it all level, um, as you can see. So that one wasn't snapped fully there, was it? That one there and that one down the back. So this is well before we do any creasing, by the way. I'm just building this to show you how I would do it. So if that's all working now, and this is all the low poly version. So let's have a look at what happens, uh, even before we build any more, if we subdivided it. So if we take it and we hit um, uh, the purple button on the non-dominant hand, you can see here we have a subdivision level. It's got other things here like the baking the mirror, which will lock your mirroring to, to solid geometry, um, restrict the face movement, and quite a few other things in there you can play with. But we want to just turn on subdivision modeling um, and as you can see there now it's all rounded as you would expect with d dividing the geometry with subdivision modeling if you if you know what that is so we could increase the subdivision levels again very normal in, in 3d programs um, but it's all rounded isn't it so what we might want to do is add more geometry so it's not as rounded and what we do is different terminology for this you could say it's it's you know doing protective edges so you can see this edge has gone all the way around here now and wherever there's two edges close together you're going to get quite a sharp return so the closer two points are together that, that that basically means that you will get a really nice hard edge so bring them all close together and we also want this corner to be sharp as well so maybe something like this where we we, we bring these points really close together and that means we'll have a hard edge or hardish edge here don't want to snap them together or anything like that um, they won't snap together anyway but you don't want them any closer than than this really but that will give us a nice hard uh, edged corner when i turn subdivision on so i'll show you turn it on you can see there it's a nice tight corner if you want it even more tight than that turn that off again what you have to do is zoom right in so i'm holding the two inner grips and then I have to put more edges in here or even up in here. And the, the more you put, the tighter you go, there's more points, more complexity, more to handle. So that can be a problem as you, as you get further on. But watch now if I zoom back out and I show you with it on and subdivided really high res. Uh, let's turn that off so you can see that's how you get nice crisp edges. Now, now too much there, obviously it, 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 it's going, I'm going to undo it a little bit. Um, uh, let's grab hold of it and what we'll do is there so that's gone back to that more more rounded so we, we didn't want to go that far now what if you want to do something um sculptural that doesn't in include adding all that extra geometry which can become a problem late, later down the line for you so what you can do is you can use a crease and this is how you you, you definitely see this in in automotive designs so say we want to put something a bit sculptural around this cheek Instead of subdividing it, we can crease parts of it. So first of all, I'll put in another split like that. So we've now got a line all the way along there. So if I wanted to uh, have a, a harder cheek area here, or a bit of a cheek fold or something like that, I would, I would have to put more geometry in. And I could end it around here. I could use the knife tool to do that. But what I can also do is I can crease these edges here. So I'll put a vertical there to it. To to allow me to have a bit more to play with. So these edges here, you can just crease these individual edges. So let's have a look at doing that. Okay, so B in edge mode, so you've, you've got your edges there. And if you come over here to the tool button on your dominant hand, you've got all these little tools that slide along. And if you come across and use this one, which is the crease one, and you just stick a crease on that edge and a crease on that edge and a crease on that edge. We'll leave the rest and see, see how that goes. You can see there, without adding extra subdivision lines or extra geometry and, and edges, you, you've now got a, a creased defined edge. So if I up the, if I hold it again and I, um, let, 
let's go in and we'll up the subdivision level overall so it's really really smooth all the way around but you've got even with no extra geometry you've got this really nice defined edge by using the crease i'll put another split in there just to help it define it a little bit now that's not going to work if you export this it doesn't work in every program so you have to bear that in mind if you're going out for things like 3d print it's very much a visual crease it's, it's doing it on the on the render side of it it's not affecting the geometry as such like a subdivision would but it's really good to get nice defined parts of the model if I put another split in there, for example, and then go to point mode, I can bring this point mode underneath and I get these really nice returns that then go up into the subdivision modeling. So, you know, if you're really careful with the creases and the, you know, the, 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 the placement of them and use a combination of that and subdivision modeling, you can get these really nice surface shapes like this. And this is what you'll see much more in industrial design and product design, um, that kind of thing. So just have a go. That's all I wanted to cover in this video is just that ability to crease those edges. It's very common in subdivision programs. It's, you know, you'll find that in Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D. Um, not everybody, like me, me being one of them, I don't use it a lot but with programs like gravity sketch i do find to get because i want to keep everything as low poly as i can i do find that that's a, a a great little tool just to get that surface shape that we want thank you so much for watching the videos and i'm really pleased to be back and using gravity sketch a lot at the moment so if you are not a gravity sketch user and you're more of a nomad user or, or, or an ipad user then we're still doing lots more content and um, so don't worry we're not going off and leaving you behind um, but it's good to know a lot of these skills so if you do like the video please give it a thumbs up um, and if you like it enough to give it a thumbs up then why not subscribe to the channel and follow along with our weekly videos.